Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I got this email from Anonymous. Subject line, something fascinating from President Nelson that you may have missed. Absolutely not a coincidence. And then in the email, Hi Jared, I find it very interesting that President Nelson's recent photo on the back cover of his new book, Heart of the Matter, and in the oil painting of him uh, hanging in the International Hall of Honor, there is the picture of the tri triumphal entry in addition to him. All photographers and artists know it is poor framing to put pictures in the background of portraits. Uh, this has to be intentional and a very big message to us. Not only are we hearing this message with our ears, but he's also providing a visual as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this picture. Uh, she provided a link for Heart of the Matter, which takes you to Deseret Book. And you can see it has his uh, picture there, his portrait, and indeed, uh, it's in his office, and it has um, Christ's triumphal entry in the background. Now, this is something that we've talked about before. I, I don't remember wh when or in what context, but we have talked about this before, probably around the April 2023 General Conference when Palm Sunday was, uh, we were talking so much about that because they made Palm Sunday a big deal during that conference. Is probably around that time. So it is something that I knew, and uh, I do agree with you, Anonymous. I think that it is significant because when we continue with uh, the email, Anonymous puts a uh, quote from Elder Gong. We're just going to read it directly from the church website. This is from the April 2020 General Conference, and uh, it's a very interesting talk. It's called Hosanna and Alleluia. The Living Jesus Christ, the Heart of Restoration and Easter. Okay, those two words by themselves are very interesting, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But first, let's go to the part that um, Anonymous brings up. So Elder Gong, he, he uh, included the painting or a picture of the painting in his talk so you could visualize it. Okay, tomorrow, no, you know what? Before we read this, just so that, you know, this is probably, it's better if we understand the context of this story. So I was going to actually share this in a different video, but we'll do it here. So this is the Institute Student Manual uh, for Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, entering Jerusalem on a donkey. Okay, the Savior's triumphal entry into Jerusalem during the observance of the Passover directly fulfilled the prophecy recorded in Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 10. And publicly, this is a key concept as we think about the second coming and how this is a foreshadowing, and publicly declared that Jesus was the Messiah. So there's like kind of like two ways that this happens, right? It happened when he did it uh, in mortality, and then there's going to be this very big public declaration at the second coming to all the world, first to the Jews and then all the world. Okay, in ancient times, the ass was a symbol of Jewish royalty. During the time of the monarchy in ancient Israel, following the enthronement of King Saul, the Jews held annual uh, re-enthronement rituals that featured a king riding into Jerusalem upon a donkey. The rider approached Jerusalem from east of the city through the Mount of Olives uh, in the Kidron Valley, and then came to the temple. And by the way, um, we've talked about this before. Let me pull it up. But we've talked about the Golden Gate of the the Temple Mount and how tradition holds uh, that Christ will go through there among Christians. And then for um, Jews, they also believe that Messiah will come through there. So this is BYU's virtual New Testament. I'll leave a link for it in the description box below. But just so you can visualize it, here's the Mount of Olives, right? Here's the Kidron Valley between the Mount of Olives and the Temple Mount, or Mount Zion, um, also known as Mount Moriah. And this would be the gate. And uh, currently, uh, there is, well, it's, it's not the original gate. It's actually a gate that's on top of the original. We did a video about that a while ago. But essentially, it's sealed up. And there's some interesting things to think about with that. But just do a search on my channel for uh, Golden Gate or uh, just go back. You'll see uh, I did a video about the church symbol and how it fits perfectly in the Golden Gate as well as the front two doors of the Salt Lake Temple. 
But anyway, okay, so this is what we're talking about, so you can picture it, okay? All right, so um, these rituals looked forward to a time when the Messiah would come to his people in this same way. Thus, at a time when Jerusalem was flooded with Jews, Jesus entered Jerusalem in a manner that demonstrated he was the Messiah, the King of Israel. Riding on a donkey also showed that Jesus came as a peaceful and lowly Savior, not as a conqueror upon a war horse. At the second coming, Jesus will return to earth in great power and glory. As a symbol of his glory, the book of Revelation describes him coming to earth on a white horse rather than on the ass he rode into Jerusalem. See, so there is a foreshadowing in this story. So with that in mind, let's return to Elder Gong's talk. He says, tomorrow is Palm Sunday. Traditionally, palms are a sacred symbol to express joy in our Lord, as in, as in Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, where much people took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him. You may be interested to know, the original of this Harry Anderson painting hangs in President Russell M. Nelson's office, just behind his desk. Yeah, that is interesting. It's interesting because this is a painting of a foreshadowing of the second coming. Right? This is the first time that he entered Jerusalem and he was recognized by some as king and messiah. Right? There were Jews that recognized who he was. And now uh, we're waiting for him to come the second time. And I think especially President Nelson because he talks about the second coming so much. And uh, I think that's why he has that in his office. I really do. Okay, so, continuing. In the book of Revelation, those who praise God and the Lamb do so clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, along with robes of righteousness and crowns of glory. Palms are included in the Kirtland Temple dedicator dedicatory prayer. Okay, so... Let's go back to uh, Anonymous's email. They say, It is such a fascinating parent parenthetical mention. Their time to speak in conference is limited, and yet he still opted to add such a seemingly insignificant phrase. But with eyes to see, it is absolutely not insignificant. It is as if he's saying that President Nelson is the forerunner um, for Jesus Christ entry right at the second coming. Uh, before we continue with the email, let's go back here to Elder Gong. And I, I totally agree with that. I really, really do. And I, frankly, I think that's why when, let's see, let's zoom out right there. Libraries, general conference. I really think that's why they chose the imagery that they did for the April 2023 General Conference, right? Um, if something happens this year, whether it's Adam on Diamond, Christ meeting the church at New Jerusalem, um, or whatever, just pick one. It doesn't matter. If some big thing happens with the second coming this year in April, uh, it would make sense that they would have this the year before. First, you have this focus on Palm Sunday, the year before April 2024, and I'm not guaranteeing that anything's going to happen. We've just noticed that there's a lot of things that point to April 2024. So one year before, you have Palm Sunday. And then the imagery for the next conference before April 2024 is the second coming. Right? You have this, uh, I think, relatively new painting of the second coming. This was the main um, imagery that they used for that conference. So, Yeah. I think, I think it's all significant. I think it's very, very significant. Okay. So back to Elder Gong. Uh, I just want to read a little bit more. So at the very beginning of his talk, he says, Dear brothers and sisters, with Hosanna and Alleluia, we celebrate the living Jesus Christ at this season of continuing restoration and Easter. Okay. So we have those two words. <laughs> me. We have those two words. Later on, he says, of course, the significance of Palm Sunday goes beyond crowds greeting Jesus with palms. At Palm Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem in ways the faithful recognized as fulfillment of prophecy. At, as Zechariah and the psalmist prophetically foretold, 
our Lord entered Jerusalem riding a colt, as multitudes knowingly cried, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means save now. Then, uh, as now, we rejoice, blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. A week following Palm Sunday is Easter Sunday. President Russell M. Nelson teaches that Jesus Christ came to pay a debt he didn't owe because we owed a debt we couldn't pay. Indeed, through the atonement of Christ, all God's children may be saved by obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. At Easter, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah means praise ye the Lord Jehovah. Right? In Hebrew, Yahweh. Um, and it's interesting, I'm not going to show it now, but on uh, the eastern wall of the Temple Mount, right now, and you can just, just do a YouTube search, the name of God, Jehovah, or Yahweh in Hebrew, is showing up uh, in the form of vines that are uh, spelling out the, the Hebrew letters for Yahweh. It's a four-letter name. So I've done videos about that. You can check it out, but it just made me think about that. Okay, the Hallelujah Chorus in Handel's Messiah is a beloved Easter declaration that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, this is interesting because Handel's Messiah is sung, um, well, at least it's, well, I don't know about the rest of the song, but the Hallelujah Chorus has been sung during the Christmas devotionals. And for the first time, as far as I can, as far as I can tell, there's another spreadsheet that was put together by uh, one of my subscribers. Uh, I don't have that up right now, but we've noticed that with President Nelson's presidency, the uh, Christmas devotionals have changed a little bit. They broke with tradition. So typically, uh, the the closing hymn would be "Silent Night," okay, and. Uh, I don't know why I didn't pull up the other one, but anyway, the other person, the subscriber that put together his own spreadsheet, he was able to go back further, back to the, the year 2000, and it's always been Silent Night. But President Nelson's first year, uh, it was it was instead of Silent Night, it was the Hallelujah Chorus. And then for the opening hymn, it was Joy to the World, which was originally, originally written as a second coming song or, or hymn, Right. It's as though he really had the second coming on the mind when he became president of the church. And then we have kind of a repeat in 2020. We had Joy to the World to start it off, and then the Hallelujah Chorus. Uh, but then we did do Silent Night as the closing hymn. And then 2023, the year before 2024, as we're looking at April, the opening hymn, Joy to the World, the closing hymn, Hallelujah Chorus. And if you don't know how uh, Handel's Messiah goes, each part um, of that work is associated with different verses from the Bible. And the Hallelujah Chorus uh, corresponds with, it's taken from Revelation chapter 19, because this is the only place in Scripture, there's only two places in Scripture where you come across Hallelujah. So I did a search, just so you can see on the Scripture Citation Index, you can search the Scriptures for specific words and phrases, and I did the different spellings, and uh, it only comes up in the book of Revelation. Now, it technically does show up in Psalms, but the way that it's translated in um, into English in the King James version of the Bible, uh, it just says like "Praise ye the Lord." It doesn't it doesn't have the original word "Hallelujah," but in the book of Revelation, it does. The book of Revelation, chapter nineteen, the chapter heading says. The marriage supper of the Lamb is made ready. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. And uh, let's just read it just really quick, just a few verses. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his saints at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up for ever and ever. 
And the twenty-four, sorry, the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, right? The second coming. And his wife, the church, hath made herself ready. And then later, let's see, horse, in verse 11 it says, And I saw uh, heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. Right? We just read about that in the Institute Manual. Uh, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, it's, it's Christ, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And then it talks about more, and then it says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So what did Elder Gong say? He said, let's see. The Hallelujah Chorus, right, which refers to Revelation 19 and the marriage supper being ready and Christ coming on a horse and being recognized as king and the church being ready to receive him. He says, the Hallelujah Chorus in Handel's Messiah is a beloved Easter declaration that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The sacred events between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday are the story of Hosanna and Hallelujah. (coughs) Sorry, Hallelujah. Hosanna is our plea for God to save. Hallelujah expresses our praise to the Lord for the hope of salvation and exaltation. In Hosanna and Hallelujah, we recognize the living Jesus Christ as the heart of Easter and Latter-day Restoration. Yeah, and remember this, when it comes to Hosanna... Hosanna um, pretty much only shows up in uh, that part of the New Testament that talks about Christ uh, entering Jerusalem. And then it shows up uh, one time, or it shows up one time, one time in 1 Nephi when the Spirit is talking to Nephi and he says Hosanna. But the only other two times in the Book of Mormon that it shows up is in 3 Nephi before Christ comes. So remember, April 2020, that's when we did this uh, unique Hosanna shout. It's typically done uh, when temples are dedicated and also at the dedication of the uh, conference center. And it has been done other times, but like nowadays, it's usually just, from what I can tell, it's usually just at temple dedications. But it was done April 2020, and I have to wonder about the full implications of what that meant. Remember, at the beginning of this conference, that's when President Nelson said, let's just read it. Let's go back to April 2020. He opens the conference with the opening message. And then at the end, he says, Welcome to April 2020 General Conference. I know that God, our Heavenly Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, are mindful of us. They will be with us throughout the proceedings of these two glorious days as we see as we seek to draw closer to them and honor them. I did a, vi- a video recently talking about about this and how this may have been more literal than we thought. They may have physically been there but unseen. I think that's a very real possibility. I think April 2020 general conference and other general conferences could have been part of Adam on Diamon. Bruce R. McConkie talks about the fact that Adam on Diamond is not just like a single uh, meeting, but it's broken up into different sessions and that Christ would go from continent to continent. You can find this in Millennial Messiah. Uh, You can read it for free on archive.org. But I think something very, very significant happened uh, during that conference. And Elder Gong is talking about it. He's talking about these two really key words um, that both have to do essentially with Christ, recognizing Christ as King. And, uh, you know, in the case of the Book of Mormon, 
with Hosanna, this being said two times in that book before Christ came to them after his resurrection. So I think we're preparing ourselves to have this experience, you know, to greet him with Hosanna, which I think we did April 2020 and hallelujah. And then at the end of the talk, he closes it by saying, and it shall come to pass that the righteous shall be gathered out from among, from among all nations and shall come to Zion, singing with songs of everlasting joy. At this season of Hosanna and hallelujah, sing hallelujah, for he shall reign forever and ever. Shout Hosanna to God and the Lamb. All right. So again, the Christmas devotional and singing the hallelujah, hallelujah chorus. I don't think that it was just arbitrary or just to mix things up. I think it was very intentional, and it was done in uh, three very key years. President, President Nelson's first year as president of the church, 2020, and then 2023, you know, just before um, the beginning of 2024, and whatever may or may not happen, I, I guess we'll see, but I think uh, it's going to be significant. Um, okay, and then I think that's it. And then lastly, Anonymous uh, says in the last part of the email, also, have you ever looked into the meaning of President Nelson's names? Yes, I have, but it's okay. Uh, let's do it again because since that time, there's been a lot, a lot of new people that have joined the channel. Okay, I did several years ago, but since I currently live in China, ooh, China, and don't have all of my journals with me, I'm going to, I'm going off memory here. It seems that his first name means red, and Marion has a meaning of being from the sea. One day after after learning, sorry, one day after learning that, I woke up with the thought Red Sea, just like Moses led the children of Israel across the Red Sea. Just one more interesting thing to add to the long list of things pointing to President Nelson's role in ushering in Jesus Christ's return. Thanks for compiling all the fascinating things going on. It definitely gives the fulfillment of prophecy a different picture. Uh, P.S. If you use any of this, I wish to remain anonymous. Wish granted. Okay, so if we look into his name, um, like I said, I've done this before. And it seems like most, you know, baby name dictionaries and and stuff, they agree that Russell means uh, red or in this case, little red. So you have red for Russell. Um, like Anonymous said, it could make you think of like the Red Sea. It could also make you think of Christ, how he's going to come dressed in red uh, robes. Um, so it could be a number of different things. I'm not saying for sure that this means anything, you guys, but I, I, I just take note. There's no problem with taking note. Uh, the problem comes in where, where you start to like preach these things as though it's fact. You know, I can't say that. You can't say that. But it's okay to take note. Okay. And then Marion, um, there, there's kind of like two things from, <coughs> excuse me, for Marion. According to babynames.com, um, it either means bitter or from the sea, right? So bitter or from the sea. Um, it makes you kind of think of wormwood because wormwood means it's like a, a bitter herb. I'm not saying that that's what this means, but bitter or from the sea for Marion. Um, also, if you go to Wikipedia and probably some other sources too, Marion is a given name as a feminine given name. It is a French diminutive of Mary. Okay, Mary. And I find that kind of interesting because it hasn't been revealed officially that I know of um, whether or not Christ was married uh, I think that probably the consensus, if you asked anybody, like any anyone anyone within church leadership, they would probably say yes, he he most likely was most likely was married, but it hasn't officially been revealed. Uh, I personally think that he would have been. But um one of the primary candidates or um, individuals that was prop that probably would have been married to him was Mary Magdalene. I just want to read this quick thing right here. Uh, was Jesus married? This is on uh, BYU. This is by Christopher James Blythe. And yeah, so let's just read this paragraph. 
While the Gospels do not include any references to Jesus having a spouse or children, Latter-day Saints claimed scriptural support for a married Messiah in Jesus' interactions with women, most prominently Mary, Martha, and Mary Magdalene. Specific attention, attention was given to Mary's anointing of Christ's feet and his appearance to Mary Magdalene after his resurrection. In 1847, Brigham Young presented the image of Mary Magdalene attempting to cling to Jesus' feet as how every, every woman at the resurrection will come right to her husband's feet, same as Mary. And uh, I'll just stop there. Maybe I'll do a video about that sometime. This seems like one of those topics I need to add to my quotes A through Z. So anyway, as far as I know, it's not, it hasn't been officially revealed. Uh, or if you have more information, feel free to send it to me. But anyway, okay, whatever. So Mary, Mary, the potentially the, the wife of Christ. And so you have that name potentially in President Nelson's middle name. And uh, we just read, you know, Christ, the groom coming to uh, the bride, right? Mary, you know, it's just, it, it'd be, it's kind of perfect. Um, again, I personally don't like thinking myself as a bride, uh, you know, but that's just, that's the symbolism that he uses for the church. And he may use the same symbolism with President Nelson. I don't know. Could be. All right. And then Nelson um, is son of Nell or champion. So, you can see how all those things would relate to Christ, um, to Christ at the second coming. So it is interesting to think about. I'm not going to make any official pronouncements about that, but it is something interesting to think about. So um, I am just looking forward to this April. I'm looking forward to the rest of this year. Maybe nothing will happen in April. Maybe something will. I don't know. But things are definitely happening. And, uh, President Nelson really puts in so much thought into everything he does. The more, the more I study his words and study him and what he does, like just listen to sister Nelson. He really is very intentional with everything that he does. Uh, this is not just like his favorite personal picture. I don't think that that's the case. I think it's because, uh, this perfectly relates to his presidency. I think that he's really, really getting the church ready for the second coming. And maybe while he'll, he is still president of the church, I guess we'll see. All right. So that is it. So thank you, Anonymous. Um, if you guys haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.